In this video, Analysis of Ingate Segregation by Numerical Simulation, I will present to you the principles we use to the predict the segregation in ingots and how to use them in industrial conditions. At the beginning I will tell you a few words about the industrial soft, the company that has developed the software used in this analysis and then I will make actually the presentation. Industrial soft, is a Montreal Canada based company specialized in ingot mold design and development of simulation software with application in improving the internal quality of forging ingots. The company is managed by Evadi Ubogdan, a material engineer who worked for more than 10 years in a forging and steel making shop. He has experience in improving the internal quality of ingots and made several mold projects for pouring ingots between 50 and 250 tons. In this presentation first, I will provide a short description of macro segregation type that has been taken in account, then the tools and the technique I use to analyze the influence of various manufacturing variables on a segregation. After that, I will present how the ingot size and geometry, casting technology variables and chemical composition have influence on segregation area size. At the end of presentation, I will show you a few examples to demonstrate practically how we can use the results to choose the ingot size and geometry to minimize the macro segregation area size and finally, the results of the solidification simulation for an ingot having in view the thermal isolation of the hot top. The analysis and the technique I will present, refers to a segregation one of the types of macro segregation. We can find this kind of material heterogeneity in the zone of transition from columnar grains to large equiax grains. This segregation presents channels enriched by carbon, phosphorus and sulfur and can be put in evidence by sulfur print test and has as result both defects detected by ultrasonic test and heterogeneity of material and mechanical properties. In this slide we can see the A-segregation position on the longitudinal section of the ingot. Next, it's a sulfur print test taken in the A-segregation area and at the bottom, the map of ultrasonic test for a forged bar. Here, I'd like to make a small note. Sometimes the ultrasonic test does not detect the A-segregation channels. Instead, as observed in real products, because of the material heterogeneity we can have problems to meet the specifications concerning mechanical properties. So, if we like to avoid this kind of problems we have to control the segregation process and one of the ways it's to choose the right ingot size function by the chemical composition of the steel. In this slide I present Simcade V.2.0. The solidification software we have developed to simulate the solidification and control the segregation process. The software takes into account the initial temperatures and thermophysical properties of the steel poured, mold material and refractory bricks. Here, I have several applications to demonstrate the possibilities of the simulation software we have developed. First example shows the solidification profile of an ingot and a segregation prediction. The second one shows the solidification profile and the simulation of axial porosity into a steel ingot. Third example shows the simulation of porosity in steel castings and the last one, an application in the heat treatment area. This flowchart presents the macro segregation prediction technique we have developed and implemented in the segregation prediction module of the software. This technique is based on Suzuki and Miyamoto method, the most used way to predict a segregation in steel ingots. As you can see in this flowchart there are two branches. The left one calculates by simulation the cooling and solidification rate. This branch has as input data the ingot geometry material properties and initial pouring and mold temperature. The other branch calculates, using the chemical composition of the steel, the critical value alpha, the value at which the A-segregation will appear. Then, the software compares the values we got from both branches and plots the segregation area in regions that contain values below the critical value. So, we have two situations. In the first case, if the solidification rate is bigger than the critical value alpha, 
as seen in the bottom left side example, we do not have segregation. In the second one, if the solidification rate is lower than the critical value alpha, we will have a segregation and its intensity depends on the difference between solidification rate and critical value alpha. The simulation software and the mathematical model for calculation of critical value has been validated using both, the data published by JSW in various technical papers and in industrial conditions at IMGB using the results of ultrasonic test for over 50 ingots with weight between 50 to 220 tons. Also, I have tested the results of the simulation with Bruck Forging, a German forging company and Companhia Siderurgica Paulista. Cosapa, a steel making Brazilian company. At the moment, the asegregation prediction technique can be used only for carbon steel and low alloyed steels. To extend the applicability to stainless steels, T alloys, or other exotic materials, we need to establish the critical value alpha using an experimental apparatus as presented in this slide. Here is an example of typical mold assembly and ingot I take as input data for the solidification simulation software. In the first table is the geometry data of the analyzed ingot. Here, the H, D ratio is defined as ratio between body height and medium diameter. The ingot taper is defined as the ratio between difference of diameters at top and bottom and the height of the body. In the next table is the chemical composition of the steel I took to calculate the critical value alpha and in the last table are the thermophysical data of the analyzed system. In the next three slides you will see how the H, D ratio, ingot taper and mold thickness have influence on the macro segregation area size. To analyze the influence of ingot H, D ratio on A segregation. I made two simulations. For one of them, the ingot H, D ratio has been 1.5. For the second one, the H, D ratio has been 2.0. The weight of both ingots has been 50 tons. These pictures presents the solidification profile of the ingots and A segregation prediction I got by simulation. The parameter Rs is defined as the ratio between area affected by segregation and the total area of the longitudinal section of the ingot. As seen in these pictures. In both ingots the segregation will appear. The area affected by segregation is larger if the H, D ratio is low. So, if we like to minimize the macro segregation in this particular ingot, a high H, D ratio is recommended. To analyze the influence of ingot taper on A segregation, as in the previous case, I made two simulations. For one of them, the ingot taper has been 9%. For the second one, the ingot taper has been 11%. In both cases the ingot weight has been 50 tons, as well. As we can see, the area affected by segregation is larger if the ingot taper is high. One of the reasons is the increasing of diameter at the top of ingot and a lower solidification rate. So. To minimize the macro segregation in this ingot is recommended a low ingot taper. To analyze the influence of mold wall on macro segregation I made two simulations as well. In one of them the wall thickness has been increased with 100 mm, from 350 to 450. As we can see, the area affected by A segregation is not much influenced by wall thickness. The segregation area size is only 1% lower by increasing the wall thickness with 100 mm. In the next three slides I analyzed the influence of hot top size, initial mold temperature and pouring temperature on A segregation. To analyze the influence of hot top size I made simulations with hot top ratio of 20, 30 and 40 percent. As you can see the area affected by A segregation is lower if the hot top size is small. So. To minimize the A segregation in a 50 ton zingot a small hot top is recommended. This slide presents the influence of initial mold temperature on A segregation. The simulation has been made for initial mold temperature of 20, 
200 and 400 Celsius degrees. The area affected by a segregation is lower if the mold temperature is low. To analyze the influence of pouring temperature on a segregation I made simulations for 1540 degrees, 1570 degrees and 1600 degrees Celsius degrees. As we can see, the A segregation area size is lower if the pouring temperature is low. So, to minimize the A segregation a low pouring temperature is recommended. In the next four slides I will present to you the influence of carbon, sulfur, silicon and molybdenum content on A segregation in the 50 tons 4340 stilingot. To analyze the influence of carbon on A segregation the critical value alpha has been calculated for 0 0.35, 0 0.40 and 0.45 percent of carbon. The results of simulations show that the A segregation area size increases with the increase of carbon content. To minimize A segregation area size, a carbon value at minimum limit provided by specification is recommended. To analyze the influence of sulfur content on A segregation the critical value alpha has been calculated for sulfur values of 0 0.002, 0 0.01 and 0.02% of sulfur. As expected the A segregation area size increases with the sulfur content. In this slide is presented the influence of silicon content on A segregation. The silicon value A I took for calculation of critical value has been 0.10, the minimum limit of 4340 steel specification, 0.23, the medium value and 0.35, the maximum limit allowed by specification. As we can see only by using the silicon content at the minimum limit we can reduce strongly the A segregation in the 50 tons analyzed ingot. Having in view a technology like VCD, we can lower the silicon content at values even lower than 0.10 and so making possible to get ultra clean steels as the 700 tons ingot poured by JSW. Also, Using silicon at values less than 0.10% can be a suggestion to develop not only new materials but also a motivation of using clean technologies as VCD. To analyze the influence of molybdenum on A segregation, the critical value alpha has been calculated for 0.10. 0.28 and 0.35% of molybdenum. As we can see, by varying the molybdenum content, we can control the A segregation area size, as well. If we can use a small R ingot we can avoid A segregation at lower content of molybdenum. This can be a way to minimize the manufacturing costs by minimizing the ferromolybdenum consumption. In the next three slides I will present to you the influence of hot top isolation on A segregation for a 4 tons 4140 H ingot. In this slide is displayed the solidification profile of four ingots having various thermal isolation. The hot top of the first ingot has not been isolated, the second one has been isolated with a thermal isolant material. For the third ingot has been used exothermic material and for the last one the hot top is isolated perfectly. Analyzing the data we got by simulation, we can observe that the solidification profile inside the body of all four ingots is practically the same in the area where the A segregation occurs. The only change is the solidification profile of the hot top. It does not matter the type of isolation that has been used. area size. Indeed, if we exclude the first ingot where there is not isolation, the A segregation area is practically the same for all other ingots. So, we can conclude that the isolation type of the hot top does not have influence on A segregation area size. I just presented the axial porosity prediction using the NAMA criterion. The most used criterion to predict porosity in steel ingots and castings.
The next three slides present the solidification profile and day segregation prediction for Nisi Armosti lingots. The ingot sizes have been between 14 and 30 tons and h. D ratio between 1.4 and 5.0. The solidification time for these ingots is between 4 and 11 hours. In this slide is the A segregation prediction. The last three ingots have practically the same weight, and as we can observe, the A segregation area size is lower if the H. D ratio of the ingot is high, as reported in some technical papers to avoid axial porosity and pipes we have to choose an ingot with low H, D ratio but if we like to have a homogeneous material without A segregation we have to choose an ingot with high H, D ratio. As result of this analysis, we can say that it is possible to control the size and intensity of macro segregation by changing ingot geometry and its chemical composition. For a 50 tons 4340 steel ingot, the segregation cannot be avoided completely only by changing the ingot geometry. A lower critical value alpha and changing the chemical composition of the steel may help to lower macro segregation area size. And as the final conclusion, the solidification simulation software and day segregation prediction technique I presented to you are useful tools that can help to choose ingot size, geometry and the chemical composition of the steel in order to minimize a segregation and increase the homogeneity of forging products. I finished my presentation and I'd like to thank you very much for listening to and if you like to ask questions I will be happy to answer them. Thank you again.